hello, not going to whinge about hay fever and tiredness, etc. Um, <laughs> did you hear the dog snore? Yes, I did hear the dog snore. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so that's a Doctor Who story that I should like more than I do. Um, and there is so much going on in there. Um, and I, I don't really know where to begin. <coughs> okay, I know where to begin. So, I've got more weight now for my uh, new exciting interpretation of Davidson's Doctor. In so much as <coughs> the whole... Do you mind? Sorry, I'm sorry. The whole denouement for this story completely rests on the fact that he he's going to abandon these eight mutants. and He didn't give a toss about them. But the second that Nyssa and uh, Tegan uh, are placed in danger, he's completely helpless to his conscience. Um, which is obviously something that ties into the whole death of Adric, but I'm sure, I'm absolutely sure now that this Doctor is absolutely defined by his relationship with his companions, whether he likes them or not. Um, <coughs> oh, my God. Wow. Sorry. Unbelievable scenes. So that's great, in so much as my new theory is great and I'm going to, you know, keep talking about that and one day write a best-selling book about it. But... Sadly, I don't actually do think it does much for the character of the Doctor here. Let's, let's be perfectly frank. The character of the Doctor was more than <coughs> willing to let these eight uh, individuals uh, live in eternal torment. And I mean eternal torment. But when it came to his two companions, that was it. He would, he would do anything for them. But it makes him... He's like... He doesn't actually do anything at the end. He doesn't save the day. It's just a pure coincidence. And, <coughs> moreover, it's not just a pure coincidence. It's something that was written in the stars. This was already part of the timeline. So it's a very inconsequential ending, quite frankly. It wasn't that it was written in the timeline, necessarily. It was just that it all came down to Bam. Yeah, but the Brigadier had already experienced this. We knew that, well... We now know that the, the thing that causes the Brigadier's mental breakdown six years ago in the coronation is the fact that he met his future self. And okay, Joe, well, that's the first time I've just realised that. Yeah, so, so it was all... Maybe, maybe the Doctor didn't realise that's why he had a breakdown, though. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, totally. But with hindsight, the Doctor didn't... The Doctor sort of ambled about. It was all preordained, and as a result, it's a little bit unsatisfying. I think the characterisation of Mordrin and by extension, the mutants, is awkward in this story because he has to swing at the start from being a bad guy. Like, he's supposed to be the threat. And even though we don't know the back... You know, we don't know the background, and therefore... They're called mutants. They've referred to them as mutants a few times. But one would want in the first... Was he in the first episode? Probably. But certainly one would want in yeah, episode two and three... To, for him to appear to be a big threat, worrying. And then by the time we get to his death, and I like David, I think the, the actor's great. It's not David Collins, is it? It's Collins. No, oh, it's David Collins. So Matthew Collins is the art dude I really like. Um, you want, by the end of episode four, to, to be exceptionally sympathetic. But it didn't quite get there for me because they're still mean mutants playing tricks. I really like the part, though, where Mordred says to the Brigadier, no, Christ, you've got to get out of here because this is a bad news situation. I liked that because that sort of provided a bit of colour to it. It wasn't just like a, he's a bad guy, he's going to do bad <coughs> things. Ugh. Yeah, this is ridiculous now, Lib. It's embarrassing. Some hay Quite frankly, embarrassing, and it's worrying me. Um, Sorry. So that... Is a shame because I think that would help the story, and I I, I think. Wait, are you saying you thought the mutants were baddies? I think the mutants at the start of the story have to appear to be bad to make the story work. They have to appear to be a traditional Doctor Who baddie, but by the end of the story, they have to be sympathetic. So that ending kind of hangs together. But I don't think at any point did they swing far enough on the pendulum. Is my argument. I didn't think they were baddies. Well, they're not baddies, but they're supposed to appear to be baddies to make it work as a Doctor Who story, for goodness sakes. Oh, by the way, I hated the overdub of, it's cracked, Turlo looking oh, at this yeah. crystal. That's a bit weird, though. Why did they do that? Because, the, because, you, because he's free of the Black Guardian's influence. He's not free of the Black Guardian's influence. Oh, but you're supposed to be Humphrey's supposed to be in bed, bad news week. Then, what's the last thing I wanted to say? Oh, yeah. 
I'm not going to go on about this too much because ultimately it doesn't matter. But a massive black mark against this story, and I'm going to, I've am gonna, i got to say it again, I've got to say it again, is I just don't think the Brigadier works in this story. The 77 Brigadier, okay, just about, but I still don't think you'll end up a maths teacher. The, the 83 Brigadier is just, oh, man. It, yes, he's had a mental breakdown. Fine. Fine. Not fine. But fundamentally, uh, that's not okay. But... Just, oh, this, uh, there are other characters you could have had. Anyway, my son is now coming because he's supposed to be in bed. Bye-bye.